So triggers, because I, this is what I'm talking about. What I talk about is a company trigger. Let, let's talk about it briefly now. You can have a company trigger. If I work for a company, I may say, look, if you have two hours of downtime, if you have repetitive failures, I require you to do a root cause. That's what I want from you. Do your best. Great. Now, if I'm a supervisor in my area, I'm not gonna, I'm I'm gonna do that, but also gonna add on a personal responsibility trigger, whatever you want to call it. I'm gonna say, look, guys, if you see repetitive failure, it may not hit the two hours or something like that, but if you just keep doing something that you know, people do this thing where they just do little fixes all the time. I'm gonna show you some examples over and over they do these little fixes i saw an operator recently in steel mill they th there was two buttons that failed right and we did the root cause training and the two buttons you had to keep them pushed down the whole time so they basically put weights on those two buttons it's been like that for two years they said in the break in the lunch break the electrician went there and fixed it right so those things you need to sometimes say look is this a problem yes or no because sometimes it's like okay that's not a problem i'm going to show you an example of that but then also then, do we need to fix it? Do we need to know the solution? And then you can go from there. So I think you have different levels and I think you have some personal responsibility in your personal life day to day. So look, let's fix this problem. Maybe I need to do a root cause, right? Um, so I think there are formal company trigger and I think there's informal and personal triggers. And however you define those, um, we talked about this already, so I'm going fairly quick through these, but typically we have safety, quality, direct cost, a bad actor list, something like that. But it's a company, formal company trigger, where the management says, if this happens, you're gonna do a root cause, right? And I think you should have one of those if you don't have it. Here's an example from a paper company in um, Washington State, where they had safety, if there's a safety one, it's an environmental, if it's uh, larger than four hours downtime, repeat failures, and I, I don't know if they have a definition of that, the cost is more than 25K. And they also had the third one, or the last one that we didn't agree with, manager's discretion, because I think the managers a lot of times take the wrong decisions. I mean, if you have a number of rules, let's follow the rules. If managers can use to request a root cost whenever, I think you're going to have a problem. So we didn't agree with that one, but they decided to do that. So that's that's their decision, obviously, not ours. So, um, I think an informal trigger can be like this. Ask three questions. If, keep it simple. If you're a supervisor, a superintendent, you may be just in charge of a small area, maybe you can't get a company trigger. I, I would say, first of all, there is a problem, yes or no. Two, causes are unknown. I mean, sometimes we talk about doing a root cause of something we actually know the causes of. Uh, and then the third one is, do we really need to know the causes? So. This may seem strange, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to this slide.